Well, the Popover API has just landed in baseline, and I am so, so excited. You might not know what Popover is, but you might have heard the term. Specifically, you might have heard of Popper. Popper was the tooltip and popover positioning engine. So think like when you hover over something and you want the little like tooltip to appear like at a specific place, that type of stuff. Or if when you scroll, you want to make sure it stays within view, which is a very annoying problem to solve. Or another really common one is if an element has an overflow property to it. Because if I have a tooltip inside of a box, I'll Excaladraw is necessary for me to explain this properly. So if we have a box and this box has an element in it, we'll say this is like a question mark, like the I need help button, everyone's favorite. And this is a box in our UI. Like our whole web page is like this, but we have this box. Maybe we have a couple of them. So we have these boxes and we have a tooltip for when we hover over one. So let's say we're hovering over this one and we get a little tooltip. I'll make the tooltip green to show it's different. And this appears when we hover over this question mark. Obviously, this tooltip would be an element on or around this inside of this, but we're using absolute positioning to put it there. What happens if you set an overflow rule on here? Like, let's say we have a horizontal scroll bar in here because the content of this thing needs to be scrollable because there might be more stuff inside of this. So if this is a scrollable element with a ton of text, if it gets to the point where it has to scroll, you're gonna have to set a scroll rule on this. Once you've set an overflow Y rule, overflow X automatically no longer allows for overflows. You cannot have overflow Y set on an element without overflow X being set to none. You will not have visibility. You can turn on overflow X scroll, but then what happens is this box gets wider once you open the tooltip or you have to horizontal scroll when the tooltip opens. These behaviors suck because of CSS being shit. This is all the different overflow behaviors when you set Y or X. So if Y and X are both visible, it overflows accordingly. If X is hidden, even if Y is visible, both now are hidden. You can manually set overflow Y to visible, but if X is hidden, Y is now hidden too. This is obnoxious. <laughs> the fact that this is a real problem is like memed here and a big part of why people make fun of the web so much. So these types of problems have existed forever and doing something as simple as a tooltip has historically been obnoxious. And the goal of Popper was to solve this via JavaScript. So it would run JS to adjust positions of things and render them at a different layer, just to make sure the element would appear where it's supposed to. So they use crazy tech behind the scenes to force the element to the top level so Z indexing doesn't get affected to make sure the element is where it's supposed to be as far as you're seeing it. Obnoxious, but a necessary evil. If we look at NPM trends, You'll see here that like Popper is half of React's installs. That's nuts. That's how common a need this is. We compare this to Vue. <laughs> Popper is more common than Vue. That's how big an issue this is. Like, are you kidding? Are you fucking kidding? <laughs> the fact that this is that necessary is insane because this should be part of the browser. And thankfully, if all goes well with the Popover API, it will finally be part of the browser. That's what Una's talking about here. That's what Popover is supposed to do is give us actual built-in native behaviors for this type of thing. It's happening. One of the features I'm most hyped about has just landed across all modern browsers and is officially a part of Baseline 2024. And this feature is the Popover API. Popover provides so many awesome primitives and developer affordances for building layered interfaces like tooltips, menus, teaching UIs and more. I can confirm this is something that Una was very hyped about. I actually asked her when I chatted with her at, um, at Epic Web what she was most hyped about and immediately starts talking about Popover and how cool this shit's going to be. Very genuinely hyped. Very, She's doing such a good job representing Chrome. She makes me excited again about all of this stuff. Normally, I wouldn't care, but she's, she's on top of her shit. Some quick highlights of popover capabilities include the following. Promotion to the top layer. Popovers will appear in the top layer above the rest of the page, so you don't have to play around with Z-Index. If you're not already familiar with top layer, it's a thing that she's been pushing for a while. Good old Jay Hay hopping in here too. The top layer sits above its related document in the browser viewport, and each document has one associated top layer. So now you don't have to worry about Z-indexing, because top layer is its own layer above everything else, which is what you really want half the time you're dealing with weird Z-indexing stuff. You just want to be sure this element goes all the way up. And now that problem is solved. It's just solved. It's a solution to Z-index 10,000. We're finally there. How long it took is something I don't want to think about. Does it have a date where this is published at the bottom? Yeah, 2022, but we're there. And Popover API makes it much easier to get into the top layer. There's also light dismiss functionality built in. Clicking outside of the popover area will automatically close the popover and return focus. Default focus management as well. Opening the popover makes the next tab stop inside the popover. Oh, you have no idea how annoying this is for modals. Having this just work. Oh. 
Accessible keyboard bindings. Hitting the escape key or double toggling will close the popover and return focus. And also, of course, accessible component design. Connecting a popover element to a popover will trigger semantically. Creating popovers is quite straightforward. To use default values, all you need is a button to trigger the popover and an element to trigger it. First, you set a popover attribute on the element, which is going to be the popover. Then you add a unique ID to the popover element. And finally, to connect the button to the popover, set the button's popover target to the value of the popover element's ID. Ugh. It's that simple. It's just attributes in HTML. You have the popover target, which is an ID for another element. And you say that this is popover, which by the way, if you're doing this in React, it's going to strip it. Very simple fix was found by chance, which is just pass true as a string. So do popover equals the string true, and you're fine if you're a React dev or using some other framework that has that problem. Should work in other things too. And now this very simple demo has a popover with more information. We can just hit escape or click out and it closes. So nice. Even has is open states where we can do animations and shit too. The CSS is really handy. The popover, background black, color white, font, yada yada. You got all the, the ideas there. But the animations here of is open, popover, popover open, translate zero, zero. And then the exit state, which is when popover is not open, which I don't love. I would have liked a popover closed type state to apply there instead. But the transition here, ease out, and the translate in order to shift it out of the display area. Or is it the opposite here? Oh yeah, the before open state, the starting style, pop over, pop over, open. I don't like the semantics of that a lot, but it works and makes sense. Regardless, the fact that the CSS is that simple to do something like this is huge, huge win. And for that to be multi-plot too, as they show above here, it's supported in the latest Chrome, Edge, Firefox, and even Safari has support for this now. Huge. That support's going to be a little more chaotic as we go along, but I'll show you guys some fun stuff. Don't worry. To have more granular control over the popover, you can explicitly set types of popovers. For example, using a bare popover attribute with no value is the same as using popover auto. Also, I guess instead of popover true, you can do popover equals auto. Very useful. This auto value enables light dismiss behaviors and automatically closes other popovers. Also very handy that when you open one of these, it closes others. That's a very annoying thing to deal with otherwise. My one concern there is if you use this for a, like a tooltip and there's a tooltip inside of a modal, that might break things. So getting that just right might be worth us quickly testing, but these things doing them correctly is never meant to be easy. It's just a lot easier than it was before. <laughs> Using popover manual will allow you to need to add a close button. Manual popovers don't close other popovers or allow users to dismiss them by clicking away in the UI. You can create a manual popover using the following. Div, I'm a popover. The button class is closed. Popover target is my popover and popover target action is hide. This kind of feels like view stuff where you're defining these levels of behaviors that are normally JavaScripty through tagging things like that. It's really cool that it is that simple and that vanilla HTML can do this now where now this won't close unless I hit the X button. The one sad part here is if we wanted to bring back the escape button behavior, because I wanted escape to close out of my modals, but I also wanted tooltips to not close my modals, that I have to write some JavaScript just to add the escape button. I'm assuming at least. There's a third type of popover, popover hint, which has been discussed in the standards bodies but is not yet implemented. This value would enable the opening of popovers that don't close other popovers, while still allowing light dismiss. Popover hint is useful for tooltips and other ephemeral layer interfaces. Look at that. I got pre-read. I was thinking about this the whole time, and they already told me they're on the way. Cool. I really hope that gets merged in because tooltips are such a pain point. And if introducing this makes weird auto close behaviors or a bunch of JavaScript to handle the manual ones, that's annoying. And if popover hint can fix that, oh, not having to write any JS for this stuff would be so nice. Popover versus modal dialogue. You may be wondering if you need a popover when dialogue exists. And the answer is you might actually not. It's important to note that the popover attribute does not provide semantics of its own. And while you can now build modal dialogue-like experiences using popover, there are a few key differences between the two. The dialogue element has hurt me much, much more than any element should. So I'm happy to be told I don't necessarily need it anymore, but let's hear the, the reasons in each direction. The modal dialogue element opens with dialogue.showmodal and it closes with dialogue.close. It makes the rest of the page inert. Okay, that seems like the biggest benefit. It does not support light dismiss behaviors. It does not. I can confirm it does not. And you can style the open state with the open attribute. Semantically represents an interactive component that blocks interactions with the rest of the page. It also has really terrible default uh, margins and other behaviors that are really annoying to fix. Versus popover, which uh, can be opened with a declarative invoker. It can be closed with popover target or popover target action equals hide. It does not make the rest of the page inert. It supports light dismiss by default. And you can open the state with the popover, or you can style the open state with popover open pseudo class. 
There's also a pseudo class for dialogue, but most importantly, there's no inherent semantics, which is really nice, especially after I've dealt with the weird shit that dialogue comes with. Dialogue was shipped well before popover and many lessons were learned. Yes. <laughs> Yes, they were. One of which is how nicely it is to declaratively open and close popovers with an invoker. To resolve this, the invoke target property is being discussed in prototype for a more declarative dialogue toggle trigger, much like with popover. That is nice. That theoretically we won't need a bunch of JS and just can do dialogues in HTML, but that's not my main issue with dialogue. It's all the weird default stuff. Regardless, nice changes. Very excited to see. We got to play with this though, because uh, I have not been particularly jazzed with the state of these demos. So this one, the simple manual popover, where this comes in and slides, we'll test it in a few other browsers. We're gonna throw this in Safari and in Firefox. So here it is in Firefox, where the animations don't work. At least it appears and disappears though, correctly. And if we go back to Safari, also no animations by the looks of it. By the way, if you're curious, we also tried the default instead of the manual. So this is with auto, still no animations if we're doing this in other browsers. It seems like Chrome's the only browser, in this case, Arc, which is Chrome based, that is happy to actually trigger those animations properly. So that's annoying that half of the demo doesn't work in other browsers, but having a default behavior for this is really nice. Here's another demo that Una posted that is meant to be a radial menu. So like you click it and like a thing spins in a circle around. And uh, yeah, you didn't notice it appeared down here. And if I click again, it moves back to the right place when it closes. But I tried this in other browsers too. So here it is in Firefox where it actually works and animates properly, which is interesting since it's the only browser where that's the case. In Safari, it goes straight to the middle on the bottom and a bunch of the icons are missing too. <laughs> Cool. All the icons work here. Half the icons are missing here. Super consistent. Yeah. Browsers suck. Again, the, the reason that something like Popper is as popular as it is, is because they've handled so many of these edge cases already. And as exciting as this is, it is concerning how much of these behaviors are broken across different browsers at the moment. And the result will likely be polyfilling from hell for a long time. Oh, that is nice. Look at that menu. You can hardly see because of my camera. And having a, a real menu system like that that is built into the HTML is so nice. I want to look at the code in a sec. Let's just see how this works in other browsers first, though. Still no animation on other browsers, which is annoying. Then all their examples, the animation is broken every other browser. Ugh. And the text rendering and the... It seems like the CSS targeting for this stuff is what's broken at the moment. Where in Chrome, the text targeting for these worked. And in... Firefox. Oh, is it just because the gradient text thing didn't work? So all the color text didn't work? It's got to be that. Yeah, this whole element here, you can't even see the text. Yeah, that's annoying. Implementing things between browsers is so much more frustrating than it should be nowadays. And anybody doing it, I'm sorry. On one hand, it's nice that Chrome follows standards, but on the other hand, they made the standards. So we can close the JS because it's not being used here. CSS we'll get to in a minute. I want to start with the HTML because we have the button up here, which is the menu button, span class is screen reader only open menu so that that works for screen readers and it's not there otherwise. Oh, they're pulling the hamburger icon from Wikipedia. That's hilarious. We have the nav popover ID menu has the close button on it too. Popover target menu, popover target action is hide. And the button, by the way, that we have up there has popover target equals menu, which means this button is targeting the menu and will automatically be bound to opening the menu when we actually click it. And then the menu itself has popover property ID menu so that these things become linked. Then the button, which is the close button, that is the popover target action hide. And it also still has to target because it needs to know which popover it's closing. Annoying, but fair to have to specify the ID and then immediately specify it again here. I get why they do that, though. Then it just works. All this logic's in the HTML. Getting a menu like this is finally just HTML code, as it probably always should have been. One more quick piece before I forget, because this is important and exciting. CSS anchor positioning is coming in hot, too, which will help a lot with this, because right now you have to do all the positioning manually when using popover. So getting things aligned properly, not great. But once you have the position anchor properties gets much easier. You can specify which element you want to anchor something to. So we have uh, connecting an anchor to another element with an implicit anchor is in the following code example. Uh, position anchor properties is added to the element you want to connect. Yep, you get the idea. Position anchor dash dash anchor element 
and position notice also has position anchor and top anchor bottom so this will be anchored to the the top of this element will be anchored to the bottom of the element that it is referencing here interesting here that you can be explicit and not set position anchor and just put that in the top position as well very interesting syntax, but it's nice that you can specify left, center, right, top, center, or bottom for anchoring an element to another element. Very similar to popper here, but doing this as a CSS function is very different. And honestly, pretty nice. Seems like the right way to do it because then you can just add padding to handle any edge cases too. Yeah, this isn't in Chrome yet. It's coming very, very soon. But here they show the demo with a screenshot of what it's supposed to look like. Once this is shipped, using it alongside the popover API, ooh, that's gonna be a brutal combo that is very, very nice. This article was like literally just posted. So it's gonna be a little bit before this ships as well. And if you're doing this right now, this is why I still recommend using a tool like Popper or now the floating UI package. But very, very soon, the browser should do all of this for us, which is incredibly exciting. CSS is mind blowing. Browser does what it can do to keep the menus in view even when you scroll. Oh, that part's really nice, actually. The amount of CSS hackery you have to do to keep things in view when scrolling normally is obnoxious. You have to have Popper running on like every frame. Oh, that's so good. That's so good. Oh, getting these behaviors working is so annoying. Having it just built into the browser is going to be really nice. Yeah. A++. Very excited. Uh, HTML fanboys eating good tonight. Let me know in the comments what you think. This is an exciting new API development and I'm hyped for the Chrome team for finally shipping this, not just in Chrome, but other browsers too. Hopefully the weird bugs we found will be solved in those other browsers soon. Until next time, peace nerds.